What's up folks? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin Kana. If you've been following along on Instagram, you know that I just got back from a 10 day Euro trip through Paris, Milan, Bologna, and Modena. So much amazing food, beautiful cities. I did want to make a video to share what I packed for the trip. All the stuff I was willing to lug around with me because I was much happier with this trip than I was my previous trip to Asia where I also did four cities in a very short amount of time. I trimmed down what I'm carrying with me because I'm getting better. I'm learning about more about how I travel, not so much catering to the fantasy of how I want to travel. So this isn't going to be all 100% gear. I have covered some of these items before, but I do want to also share some pointers which can maybe help you on your next adventure. So three goals with this video. One, I do want to update my kit page, my travel kit on kit.com, that's on the agenda. Two, I just wanna hang out with you folks and chat gear because that's what I love. And three, I have a ton of travel movies coming out. I shot almost four travel movies while I was on the road. So this video should hopefully serve as something that I can point back to to show you how I made all of those travel movies in a short amount of time. How I was still able to enjoy the moment, how I didn't get too caught up in all of the gear that I was bringing and how I didn't drive my girlfriend and crazy at the same time. So I took the bags that I brought with me, I filled them up with all the gear that I wanna cover, so we'll just go through them one by one, we'll raid my bag and figure out what's inside. So starting off with the suitcase, this is the Timbuktu Co-Pilot Roller in the 22 inch size. This complies with most of the international traveling standards, so you can just carry this on the plane, don't have to deal with baggage claim. Back this up a bit. Okay, that's better. Start by zipping it open. See what I got inside. This is the best part about this suitcase, the clamshell design. So I start over on the hard side. This is the side that has the wheels on it, so it's got a little bit more reinforcement going on. So let's start with these. These are my Nike Free Commuters. I love the color wave on these. Uh, just the fact that I can use them either for running, for hiking, for just walking around the city if I want. They're kind of like a combination of streetwear plus running plus outdoorsy which I really enjoyed. I wore my formal shoes like on the plane and when I was in the airport. On most days, they're pretty comfortable, but it was nice to know that I had the luxury to be able to work out if I wanted without taking up too much space in my bag. So again, I do use the hard side of this case for the stuff that I'm gonna be using when I either get to my destination or don't really need at the airport, then cover it up. I did actually pick up a tip from Anna, my girlfriend, with uh, packing these two mesh pockets with like socks and underwear. So first of all, these merino wool socks are amazing. I will link them up in the description. I love ankle socks, but my feet sweat a lot. But these are the best because they regulate your temperature and they make sure your feet don't sweat too much or stink at all. Speaking of underwear, I still love the Ex Officio boxers. They are the best, again, for regulating your body temperature, making sure it doesn't smell. There's also quick drying, so I use these for India a ton last year, where I could just wash them either in the sink or in the shower and then hang them to dry. They're literally dry within a couple hours, so they are the best for traveling because you don't have to bring a ton of pairs of underwear. Then going back over to the hard side, I did use these. These are kind of just packable bags and I would use these for all the dirty stuff. The fact that all the clean stuff was in the mesh bags here and then all the dirty stuff was there, that made sure that everything was separated and it also provided a nice layer of kind of cushion between the two layers. Let's head over to the soft side. I don't think I have anything in there. We're gonna just zip this all the way closed. And the reason that I call this the soft side is because it has this quick access pocket for things like chargers or snacks or coats and scarves if you're traveling to a cold place. It's just the fact that you can get inside of your bag without opening your entire suitcase and showing everyone at the airport your underwear is the best thing ever. And not only is it a pocket to it, but it has a pocket inside of it, which I would use to keep uh, magazines. And I would also keep my laptop stashed in here when I'm at the hotel. I'm going out for the day and I'm not carrying my laptop with me. I like to hide it just to keep things safe. You can never be too careful. On the front of the bag here, I have the uh, Casey Neistat style uh, skateboard holder. I don't travel with my penny board anymore, unfortunately, but it does. In my last video I made about this, I didn't have any solution for this top compartment. No worries, it is now the toiletries pocket. Always and forever. Your toiletry bag is the last thing to leave the hotel room. It is the old thing you always forget in the bathroom. It is the first thing you take out when you're at the airport to go through security. To have a dedicated pocket for it is such a game changer. I love the skateboard wheels on this bag. The handle is pretty sturdy. I did lose actually a cap 
for the handle here somewhere along the way, so that's unfortunate. Also, when I travel, I don't unpack my suitcase. I try to sincerely live out of my suitcase just so that I'm not unpacking, I don't use hotel safes, I don't use any of the drawers or cupboards and Airbnbs, just because I know for me that would be a recipe for forgetting stuff. Okay, come back a little closer here. Did you guys watch the Minimalist documentary? They had this bag, this duffel bag that they launched an Indiegogo campaign for. It's actually pretty dope. It uses a very similar clamshell design to that, has a pocket for your laptop, all that stuff. The problem with that bag is I can't use it because I have camera gear. I don't just get to my destination and then walk out onto the street just by myself. I like to have a water bottle and an external charger and a camera with a separate lens. Plus, I don't think I could give up the rolling wheels, so because of that, I really prefer the rolling suitcase backpack combo. I've swapped everything out. I've tried messenger bags, I've tried duffel bags, I've tried slings. That is the best combo, at least in my opinion, for traveling and the backpack I'm using is new from my last video it's still the peak design everyday backpack but it is in the Leica color wave I don't shoot with Leica I'm just a huge fan of the pop of red all over the bag it's got the red inside the pockets here as well as that awesome beige color inside there is enough technical breakdown videos of this bag floating around the internet so I'm not gonna bore you with those, but I do want to share with you some tips on how I use this. So I got rid of my drone, I got rid of my 70 to 200 lens, everything that I carry production content wise fits into this bag and I love that. When it feels like a big production, unless you're getting paid for the content, it's not fun to travel around with a ton of gear on your back. Let's zip it open here. I did keep my Sony a7R 2 the camera that I'm shooting on with this right now, in this pocket right here. It just 95% of the time got my Zeiss 25 millimeter F2 Battis on it. I actually did have a new accessory. I'm gonna unclip it from the camera that I was trying out on this trip, the Peak Design Cuff. This made sure that I had the security that if I was on a photo mission and swapping lenses, it wasn't gonna fall. Speaking of swapping lenses, the other lens that I carry around, the only other lens that I have for my camera that I'm super happy about is the Zeiss 55 millimeter F1.8. Gives me a little bit of extra reach, plus the bokeh on it is great for stuff like portrait. I keep a massive 128 gigabyte SD card inside my camera so I don't have to worry about running out of space. Let's pop open this side. Uh, just some snacks and some extra batteries. And then I think I also have, yeah, just in case, USB uh, stick here. I think this is, again, 128 gigabytes. So I do have the ability, if I run out of space, to just transfer everything from the one memory card I have. I did utilize these side pockets a little bit more in this trip, which is something that I did not do in my Asia trip. Uh, they're a lifesaver. They make sure that you don't, everything stays where it should be if you have a dedicated pocket for everything. Nalgene water bottle always stays in the side compartment. This is a one liter size, which you should always carry around with you. I even do it when I'm walking around here in the city just to make sure I stay hydrated. Let's zip open the top pocket here. Inside I have, I Laptop. I got a new laptop last year. It is one of my best purchases I made. I souped it up all the way. This is a 13 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. I got a one terabyte hard drive in it as well. The luxury of being able to edit on this on the go without having an external hard drive cannot be understated. I just finally feel like I can edit and push out a lot more content, which is priceless. The other thing I have in here that I always carry around with me is my Bellroy passport wallet. All of my cards, my travel cards, my credit cards, IDs, everything, all my eggs are in one basket. Plus, it's got a little pen in here, which I just think is dope. If I open the top compartment, I do have a special hidden pocket right here. I actually, when I sold my ash colored one, I almost forgot to take the cash out of there, but I do keep some cash in this pocket just in case. I used the origami dividers this trip, which I don't know why I didn't do last time. Keeping my headphones in here, these are the Sony WH-1000X Mark IIs. These headphones were, for me, top three purchases of 2017. I love these headphones. They are noise canceling, they have a cord so you can listen to movies or music on the plane. I use these to record the podcast with. There's touch controls on the side, the battery life is insane. You can cup your ear over this to let noise in from the outside, so if the flight attendant comes, I can turn on ambient ambient noise so that if I'm editing and Anna wants to talk to me, she's not screaming. These and my AirPods are the only two headphones that I have now. I used to have headphones for travel, for podcasting, for running, for walking around in the street. Now I just have two headphones. They're completely wireless unless 
I need the wires for these guys. Second side of the bag, I carried this around with me the entire trip. I mostly used it for vlogging. I didn't use it for a ton of photos, but this is from a brand called Sirui. I prefer it over the Joby Gorillapod just because it does have the ability to fold down into a tripod if you need it. Plus, it actually goes a little bit further out than the Joby one does. You, you can turn this into a super long selfie style vlogging rig if you want. The Joby one never actually fit in this side pocket like I wanted it to, so I'm super happy with this and I carried it around everywhere. It also signified the switch over to the mobile photography side of the bag. I carried around three moment lenses while I was traveling the entire time. The macro, the wide, and the superfish. I used the wide primarily for vlogging, but I did use the macro and superfish to get those insane, like out of this world style photos that I really appreciate. Adds a really interesting storytelling aspect to whatever you're shooting. Plus it's a good way to kind of stand out and make your photos look a little bit different on the gram. Another must have, something that I didn't really appreciate until I thought I lost it and bought a different kind of power brick. This is a Kensington Universal uh, adapter power brick. I engraved all of the country codes on this thing so I knew at a quick glance on which one goes for what. The thing that makes this amazing though is the two USB ports on the top. A lot of us charge our devices over USB anyways so the fact that I don't have to worry about individual tiny bricks to plug into this is great because then I can charge my laptop as well as my camera and my phone all at the same time. It is a lifesaver. What do I have in this pocket? This is where I keep all of my cords, all of the kind of peripherals, either lightning cables or micro USB or USB-C cables. It prevents the rat's nest effect from happening in your bag. My new laptop is the best thing ever because I can actually charge it with an external battery pack. I use this one from Rav Power that has a stupid amount of milliamp hours to it. It has all of the ports that I need, USB, USB-C. Also in here, I have my hyperdrive. I use this to replace all of the ports on my MacBook. Pro, yes, I am living the dongle life. But when I compare this to using like an external hard drive that I had to do for my old computer, there's it's a no brainer. This is awesome. Another thing that I brought around with me at all times was my iPhone 8 Plus can't live without this thing. Tweeting, checking on Instagram, messaging friends, pulling up restaurants on the maps. I always had this on me. I did pay a little bit extra per day to have my plan from back here in the States in Europe. So I did have like 4G LTE service while I was walking around, which is awesome. Anna and I would actually hotspot off of the same phone. So we both had service whenever we needed it. Battery life is great on this. I don't think I could let go of the home button. One of the reasons why I didn't upgrade to the 10. And plus I have this mount plate on the back for all my moment lenses because they're all v1 lenses so that way I can keep whatever case I want on my phone and still attach my camera lenses to it last but not least and this kind of moves around depending on what bag I have I use this Manta sleep mask I supported these guys on Indiegogo it has adjustable eye cups on the inside and it also doesn't press down on your eyes so you can actually get REM sleep blocks out everything it, you can sleep on your side it's super comfortable uh, fleece and uh, fur kind of stuff all the way around. Has these Velcro. Problem I had with my previous eye mask is that the band was made with elastic and after a few weeks or months it would give out. So I personally love carrying around this thing so I can almost guarantee that I can sleep anywhere no matter what the lighting conditions. Helps a lot for jet lag. Of course this isn't everything that I brought with me. These are just the things that I thought could bring you guys a little bit of value, stuff I wanna share that really made traveling this time enjoyable for me. I had a ton of extra room, I wasn't bogged down, I didn't feel like I had a ton of stuff on my back, which is exactly how travel should be. It shouldn't feel like a big production. You should be able to enjoy your time wherever you are. Everything I talked about is gonna be linked up in my travel kit down below. If you guys have any tips for me or stuff that you would like to share, I would encourage you to leave them in the comments. I have a trip coming up this weekend, so whatever you guys have to dish out, I would love to know. Or if you folks have any trips coming up that you're excited about, let me know down in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe subscribe button if you aren't already. We are really, really growing on this channel and I'm super psyched about it. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Justin Kana. Have a good one.